This is the Rimat Nevera. 1,914 horsepower, four electric motors and four gearboxes. 1,741 pounds-feet of torque. It does zero to 62 miles an hour in under two seconds. It runs a quarter mile in 8.5 and it's got a top speed of 258 miles an hour. It's also got a range on a full charge of 350 miles in case you're wondering, although not at 258. It's got some of the most advanced driver assistance systems in the world, some of which will allow you to do very naughty things. And we're here above the Arctic Circle where grip is at a premium. Nearly 2,000 horsepower on ice with no studs. Oh yes. One thing I do have to clear up before we go any further. It's exactly how you say the name properly. Marta. Rimac. 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 And also, how do we say the CEO and founder's name in the correct way? Marta. Marta Rimac. Mate Rimac. Marta Rimac. Marta Rimac. Marta Rimac. Marta Rimac. Ah, glad we got that sorted. On with the show. Matarimats is essentially a younger, better looking and less prone to weird social media posts to Elon Musk. He's the guy who started Rimats, developed it into an industry powerhouse that provides electric know-how and advanced driver assistance systems to big manufacturers. Porsche and Hyundai are both serious investors in Rimats, and he just took over Bugatti. Yeah, he did that. He's 34. And blatantly a bit of an overachiever. The Nevera is basically a showcase for all the technological know-how that Rimac has to offer. It's named after a particularly angry storm in Croatia where Rimac is based, and it's got some quite exceptional toys, which I'm going to attempt to explain while doing this. This is science! This is science. Hello, science. Still sciencing. Still having science. Now the Nevera has four motors, one for each wheel, and four gearboxes. One out by each front wheel, and then it's got a pair of gearbox in a single housing just in the middle of the rear axle. Now it needs those four gearboxes so that it can maintain both a really high top speed and violent acceleration, of which the Nevera has quite a lot of both. To put that into some sort of context, the front motors have roughly 300 brake horsepower each, and the rears have got 650, also each. So this car basically has a Bentley Continental GT Speed per rear wheel and a pair of Audi S3s up front. Which means that if you switch all the systems off and bring it to a stop, switch off the traction control and just plant the throttle, you get God, 180 kph, 200 kph wheel speed. Uh, okay, so it's not that effective, but it is spectacular. But if you switch all of the systems on, the Nevera has a thing called RIMAC All Wheel Torque Vectoring, or RAWTV, which isn't a rude TV channel. It's just a series of sensors that monitor each wheel up to 100 times a second and basically do all the torque vectoring. So it can manage pretty much anything. So now we've got all the systems on, it's exactly the same place, the same surface, and I'm going to launch it in the same mode. Okay, so here we go. Three, two, one. Okay, we're getting, we're getting up, but it's not wheel spinning. Whoa. Okay, so it's a lot more effective, but a little bit less spectacular. And because it's infinitely configurable, you can actually have the car set to 100% rear wheel drive or 100% front wheel drive. 
Though I can't think of a reason why you'd want to do that. Switch it into the right mode though, and it will let you act like a drifting hero without actually needing to be one. I mean... Oh, drifter! But it doesn't stop there. Electric vehicles love a bit of brake regen, right? That's when it basically, during deceleration, the electric motor spins the opposite way and claws back some of that energy to recharge the battery. Well, the Nevera is right up there with the best of them, even with this kind of technology. If I put brake regen on high, now if I accelerate and get to say 70 miles an hour, which is on snow, don't forget, and watch, I lift. Because the electric motor is seamless and not geared, it's a proper one pedal car. It brings the car completely to a stop and it's completely smooth. Now, if I switch that off again and do exactly the same thing, but with the normal brakes, so we're gonna go up to 60 odd miles an hour. Watch this, hit the brakes. Can you hear it? So the ABS system is actually very smooth and very safe, but it, it's grabbing the brake and letting it go when it slips. It's grabbing, 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 letting go. So the brake regen is actually a smoother, more consistent stopping force than the brakes themselves. That is clever. The Nevera's also got 13 cameras, six radar and 12 ultrasonic sensors. This car could basically drive itself if such things were legal. But it doesn't mean to say that that sort of stuff doesn't have other uses. Basically, the Nevera can go to any racetrack in the world and it's got a thing called driver coach and that will teach you via the head up display where to brake, where to accelerate and where to turn in. It will teach you to be a better driver like a video game. And that's clever. It's also got what I've termed hyperactive aero, which is very much like active aero, except a lot more of it. The splitters front and back, the front air dam and this rear spoiler all move to make the slipperiest or downforciest, yes that is now a word, car possible. And yes, it also acts as an air brake when you really want to stop, although it doesn't work when you're going sideways. Now the 120 kilowatt hour battery sits in a kind of spine down the middle of the car with two blobs at either end. Weight distribution is nigh on perfect, but more than that, the Nevera seems to disguise its weight really well. It feels much lighter than it really is. It feels agile. And a car with this much horsepower and weight really shouldn't. Is it thrilling? Absolutely it is. Is it the same as an internally combusted hypercar or supercar? No. The noise isn't there. It's different. There is noise, but it's not the same as having an engine revving. And the acceleration is very insistent and very instant. So, I mean, my neck feels like I've been bench pressing with it. Do you know what? This car just feels like a different flavour. There's more nuance in the traction than I thought there'd be. The modes are very different in feeling. They give it a completely different character. It's not a digital representation of speed. It's there, and this car feels real, naturally. It feels like a good sports car. But the most impressive thing about it is it doesn't feel fake. This, I don't think, is competition for your traditional supercar or hypercar. It's a completely different thing. You shouldn't be judging it on the same standards. This is a new breed. But what about that practical stuff? Well, this being Rimats, it'll charge as fast as anything you can find for it. At 500 kilowatts DC, it'll do zero to 80% in under 20 minutes for a 120 kilowatt hour battery. But quite where you'll find a public charger that big, I'm not actually sure. There's also space for stuff and it's comfortable. And driving it around normally, even on these Swedish icy and snowy roads, it's actually just a bit of a pussycat. But you know what? This is one of the world's most powerful production cars on snow with very little to hit. So that.